Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Partick Thistle are the latest team to try and stop Celtic. Rooney says Aberdeen will be even better next season. Scott Gemmell names his Scotland under-20 squad. Yeah, just a few of the talking points. Alan Ruff and myself, Peter Martin, will be discussing, including last night's games in the uh, Premiership and the playoff between Dundee United and Falkirk. We'll be speaking to a Dundee United fan to get his take on uh, the match from last night and the second leg to come on Friday at Falkirk Stadium. Uh, so lots to talk about, Ruffy. Let's have a look at the papers, first of all, to get a little flavour of what's dominating the uh, back page headlines. And the record, first of all, uh, as you can see, uh, the headline we were discussing in great, greater detail yesterday, Jer should be embarrassed they haven't finished second. Uh, and it's a similar headline across most of the papers. The Sun uh, also uh, carrying Zip It Pedro. <laughs> this is the battle of or the war of words between the two managers, which is great copy for us. Uh, we are safe and we are not, uh, alludes to the games last night, Motherwell and Hamilton with contrasting fortunes. And the Daily Mail, again, you should be embarrassed and you can see the dejected uh, face of Dougie Emery there. And there's also a story... Um, Barry Mackay was going to have to wait before Rangers decide on any new deal. So that's just a few of the headlines. Of course, great for us, this uh, argument, this war of words going on between them. And then, of course, Neil Lennon threw his toughens worth in uh, yesterday as well, saying that um, Pedro Cascini has been average at best since taking over from Mark Warburton. Yeah, it seems to be as a, as a manager coming over here, you know, whether that happens in Portugal, I don't know. You're allowed to talk about other teams or other, other players. Uh, he seems to be quite confident doing that. But he certainly upset Derek McInnes. Yeah. The, I mean, Derek wouldn't have come out with that uh, kind of headline or that statement if he wasn't really annoyed by it. And uh, as you said, it just adds a bit of spice to the game. Yeah. It? Well, I thought Derek had a point on the basis that quite simply he knows Rangers. He knows the standards and the expectations of the fans. So quite simply, this obsession, it's a strange obsession at the moment with Pedro Cascina, you know, mentioning things. I mean, he, he gave out his team ahead of a game, which seemed to, you know, stir a few people up the wrong way. Um, but over and above that, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything of Pedro Cascina's team to suddenly suggest to me it's drastically different from Mark Warburton's side at the moment. No, I think he comes under the the same scrutiny uh, as Cathro at Hearts. You know, I don't think he'll be judged until we see what kind of players he's going to be bring into the club. What he's doing just now is obviously trying to keep the Rangers supporters on board by feeding them wee bits and pieces. You know, and keeping them sort of a holding on to see who it is and uh, the Rangers supporters will have to make up their mind whether uh, if it's 35 year olds coming in or people on loan or, or, or Bosmans or that kind of thing is where Rangers are going to go you yeah. know and, and that's at the end of the day they'll decide but the Rangers supporters will buy their season tickets they're, they're like Celtic supporters they just want to be there I don't think they'll have a problem there so I think they're eagerly anticipating waiting to see who the first signing is. That's all well and good, Robbie, but by buying the season tickets and you can understand their loyalty to the club, I think a number of people are saying, well, wait a minute, is it season tickets that are bailing the club out again? Yeah, that that's something that needs to be thrashed out. I think somebody needs to come out with a statement. Obviously, everyone like, likes to know what the next season's going to bring in. Uh, we've already had the, the Dave King scenario with, with the money that uh, was promised. He said he put in, I think it was 18 million, but we all know that looked as if it was going towards wages of people coming in and, and on big wages. That's why he was spending it. So, yeah, there has to be a, a new sort of a way ahead for Rangers and uh, it'll be interesting to see how much money the manager will have to deal with. Yeah, and over and above that, um, uh, the manager saying that Barry Mackay is just going to have to wait to see if there's a new deal on the table that's acceptable to him. Yeah, that's, that's for me. That's a strange one. You know, if you if you really want Barry Mackay uh, as one of your big players for next year, you should be keeping him on board. And I don't think hanging him out there and and and, and having him wait to see, you know, am I getting a deal? Am I not getting a deal? Because there might just be somebody out there who might fancy him. We've heard that uh, the Sir Warburton then at Notts Forest likes him. Yeah. You know, so I don't know what kind of contract he's on, but I mean, it's it's leaving it open. 
for other teams to sort of, if they're interested, to try and see if he's available. But uh, I would have thought that would be an ideal start. I think the fans like the boy Mackay. I think he's an exciting player. Mm. Why not just say, right, he's my first signing? Yeah, well, to be fair, I think Barry Mackay needs to be consistent more than anything mm -hmm. else, rather than, you know, just a, a little flash here and there. I think he needs to regularly do it so that Rangers mm -hmm. fans can look at him week in, week out and think you're the real deal. Mm -hmm. Consistency is the key, Rafi. Um, over and above that, um, I, I don't know, something in the water. Everybody's having a pop. Derek White said it would be a step uh, back for uh, Ryan Jack if you were to sign for Rangers? Well, we're led to believe there are English clubs down there uh, and obviously they will pay more money than Rangers and, and we see all the young players want to go down and, and be in England and be with the big players. So I have to say in that aspect, it probably would be. Yeah. Um, Adam Rooney reckons that Aberdeen are going to be stronger next season. I mean, I think, it's, I think there's a lot of bluster going on at the mm. moment, you know, and I'm not so sure, you know, you can actually say with any great conviction until you start to see some of the some of the players that are yeah. coming in. I really would like to see. I think, you know, we questioned Aberdeen and their bottle last season when they could be consistent. October was the killing of them. They weren't able to take on a a poor Ronnie Dyla Celtic side. Um, this season, I think they've been better um, and deserve tremendous praise for that. But I'd like to see a couple of other teams step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm drawing you into this argument is because Neil Lennon's mentioned that he thinks, you know, he wants Hibs to be the best of the rest to finish second. Mm -hmm. Wow, talk about putting pressure on mm -hmm. yourself. Well, as, as we speak about it every time we're on the show, budget. You know, if they wanted them, the Rangers manager, the Hearts manager, the Hibs manager, the Aberdeen manager will have a budget to play with. And it depends what that budget is, what kind of calibre of player you bring in. Yeah, you can wheel and deal and you can pick up people who, who are out of contract. But uh, at the end of the day, we're all talking about, you know, obviously Hearts, Rangers, Hibs, Aberdeen. What are Celtic going to do? You know, the, I think the the assistant was saying there, we're not going to be bringing in four or five players, we're going to bring in two or three quality. And then it depends on what that quality is. If that quality is three and four million pound players, then again, it wouldn't really matter what the rest of them do. Celtic are still going to be ahead. Yeah, of course. And the, uh, you know, the speculation today is that if uh, Virgil van Dijk moves to Chelsea, that's another five million in the kitty uh, for Celtic as well. It gives them even more uh, power. Uh, they've been linked with a move for Fabian Delph of Manchester City. But uh, again, it gives them the power to suggest mm -hmm. to certain players. If you're not getting a game there and you want to come and maybe sample the chances of getting into mm -hmm. the Champions League, this is a, the perfect lure. Well, I think the perfect lure from the, 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 the players down in, in England, uh, Scott Sinclair and Dembele. You know, you look at these two players who down in England weren't really setting the heather on fire. Obviously, one of them was just a young, young player, but Scott Sinclair had been about. And if there are other players of equal ability down there that they could identify to come up there, then it, it would look on the, on the face of it that Celtic will just get further and further away. Yeah, uh, and of course uh, the money itself. Um, I, I, the one thing I would say about Celtic have their own ambitions for Champions League um, and, and getting into the group stages there and possibly beyond. I'd like to see the other clubs. I want to see an Aberdeen. Um, I want to see a Rangers or someone uh, St Johnston as well getting to the group stage of something. I mean, it would be a huge bonus uh, Ruffy, I just think it's been woeful um, and, and again uh, every time I meet certain people who talk about standards, their standards have dropped, there's no doubt about mm -hmm. it there maybe it hasn't, uh, I think it's dropped to, this, to the point where Brendan Rodgers is trying to get Celtic up to, to a certain standing but the rest of them know, know they have to bridge mm -hmm. that gap and I think the, the real measure will be someone getting beyond mm -hmm. the qualifiers yeah, I think uh, obviously with the resources that Rangers have got, you would you would like to think that they would be the team. I don't think Aberdeen and Hearts have got enough European experience uh, to to just sneak in there. But you're right; if we could get two of them, and it would be great. It means they're playing in the, the group, the five five games, right up until maybe January, and, and that's something that even the neutrals would want to see as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, coming up in the next part of the program, we will hear from. Uh, the Motherwell manager, Stephen Robinson, on that dramatic uh, win last night against Kilmarnock. Lee McCulloch offers his thoughts on the match. Lionel Ainsworth gives us uh, his take on Motherwell's season. Uh, we'll also look ahead to Partick Thistle against Celtic. We'll be talking about Hearts, that stand uh, starting to take uh, shape. Well, 
the girders are taking shape anyway uh, and we'll discuss much much more including uh, the playoff who's in the box seat now is it advantage to Falkirk uh, you can give us your view on that as well we'll read out some of your messages on social media but we thought we'd give you a little question regarding Eric Cantona Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. Alan Ruff with me, Peter Martin. Um, last night, Ruffy, I was out watching a football match uh, and then uh, the highlights of the Hamilton game up at Ross County as well uh, this morning. Uh, I just I have to admit a, a tremendous amount of sympathy for Martin Canning. How Hamilton Ackies mm -hmm. didn't win that game absolutely leaves me gobsmacked. The gods are against him at the moment. Yeah, you could see the the faces of the Hamilton players after the game absolutely dejected and the manager, and quite rightly so. The chances to win that game, Mally Crawford's free kick, fantastic free kick. If it had been Messi that done that, we'd be raving about it. Hit the post, even the goal that they lost <laughs> hit the post and hit the goalkeeper and went in. Just one of these nights, but at two each, you're, you're saying to yourself, well, that's good enough, that's good enough, let's get out of here. And then a wonderful strike, uh, and you could see the dejection in the, the Hamilton players. Martin Cannon have to lift them up for, for the last game. Uh, it's a massive one, but again, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Inverness. Yeah, um, of course, that's, that's the key to it all, but nevertheless, they now know at least minimum it's a playoff. They've been over the course before uh, with that. I think he'd be happy just to try and emphasise to the guys, look, We've been here before, we've been written yeah. off before, you know, you're, you're either going to be up against a Falkirk or Dundee United, you know, this uh, is how to approach yeah. it. They've, been, they've got that experience yeah. of it before. Yeah, but I think this time, Peter, it's a reversal, you know, uh, they'll be the favourites. You know, yeah. the last time against Hibs, Hibs were the favourites. Uh, I don't think anybody imagined that Hamilton would have turned around the score from the Hamilton game. So it doesn't matter who they play, they, they're the Premier League side. They, they're the ones that will be going in uh, expecting to win it over the, the two legs. Uh, and it remains to be seen which team they're going to be playing because both of them look pretty hot. Yeah, yeah here are the uh, results from last night's matches. Just confirmation of that result up at uh, Dingwall, Ross County 3, Hamilton 2. Uh, and Motherwell 3, Kilmarnock 1, and there's the uh, Premiership playoff as well. Dundee United 2, Falkirk 2. We'll be speaking uh, to a Dundee United fan very shortly indeed. But uh, as far as uh, the game at Fir Park, I mean, it was one of those nights mm -hmm. where they were all wondering what was happening at Dingwall as well. Um, Motherwell get off to the perfect start, and then slowly but surely, I was impressed by mm -hmm. uh, Lee McCulloch's uh, side. I thought they passed the ball well. Mm -hmm. And they introduced a couple of young players uh, here and there, and, and they all played particularly well. It looked as if the game was to and fro and chances at either end. You could obviously see the pressure was there uh, within the Motherwell camp, but uh, obviously when the second one went in, there was a great deal of relief, and, uh, and even more relief when the third one went in. Yeah, I think to his credit, and sometimes managers can much maligned when they they don't react. Uh, the boy uh, David Ferguson was getting ripped up by Jordan Jones, uh, and the manager just took him off. It was harsh. You could mm -hmm. feel the boy's pain, but he was he was getting you know absolutely slaughtered down the mm -hmm. uh, the left hand side. Kelly were getting chance after chance there. But then again, I think Motherwell wanted it more. It was a strange thing. Great turnout from the fans. Over 5,000 there. 500 Kelly fans as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked a great atmosphere. But you're right. You know, the manager's got to protect the young player. He's got a future ahead of him. It was just one of these nights and they had to make a decision and all credit to him. He made that decision and uh, and got the benefit of it. But I think a young boy will come back again. Everybody has one of these nights. But, uh, you know, at the end, he'll be celebrating like everybody else. Yeah, um, I'm not, not, not too sure they'll be celebrating finishing third bottom, Ruffy. I don't know where the celebration is there. But here's what the, the manager, Stephen Robinson, had to say about how he felt after the 3-1 win. Um, pure relief in a one. Uh, I'm very conscious. Listen, I'm, I'm buzzing inside, of course, and I, I'm absolutely delighted. You, know, you carry a weight of 
of everybody around this football club when you're you know you've got the honour of leading the football club and you know that the consequences if you don't stay up will happen so yeah there's a lot of pressure comes with that we've handled it well um, I thought boys stood up to be counted the last couple of games uh, we've listened since I came in here they have and we just maybe hadn't had the, the rub of the green or the, the results that we probably deserve but when it went against us tonight and you know, so we made a bold change and, a, and it worked for us yeah, you mentioned he made one bold change. He actually shifted a few people about, mm -hmm. put Ainsworth up mm -hmm. uh, front as well, and that caused problems. He's got tremendous speed. Maybe yeah. if, if, he'd have, if he'd have touched the goal with it at times, mm -hmm. he'd be worth millions. Yeah, but the good thing about it was when he's on the park and he, and he scores a goal, it's not, it's not a tap-in, it's a screamer. Yeah. And again, we saw him score one like that at Partick Thistle. Uh, he's been in and out of the side, but uh, uh, if he, I think he did mean it. You know, it was a yeah. tremendous strike. Uh, th it came through about four or five players. I don't think Jamie McDonald had any chance. Oh, but, no uh, fault for the keeper, Ruffy. No, it came through five or six players. Yeah. Uh, I think he, he didn't see it until late. I, I just thought it was a wonderful strike. Yeah, well, OK. Um, as far as Kilmarnock were concerned, I don't, I don't get the sense that Lee McCulloch was uh, too bothered about the defeat. He's just got to sit down with the board at some point and, and work out his future, whether there's... Um, things that he wants in place before he commits himself to Kamana, whether they want to just wait and see. But um, this was his assessment of the defeat. First half, were brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. By far the better team first half. Um, second half, two set plays and a breakaway goal has cost us. Second half, we weren't as good. Um, we didn't create any clear-cut chances, but I don't think they did either. It's a bit of a, a scrappy second half. Um, probably that Motherwell looked the team that wanted it more than us. Uh, I think that showed with the 50-50s, the one in the headers, the, the, the pressing. Uh, we looked a little bit lacklustre in that. And again, we told the boys after the game. So, delighted with the first half. D very disappointed with the result. We move on to Saturday. Yep, yeah, uh, Kelly will be staying in the uh, Premiership, which I think is the remit for Lee McCulloch when he took over. Uh, as far as uh, Motherwell are concerned, I mean, Lionel Ainsworth is at the end of his deal in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they've got enough money to attract him to stay in the area, I mean, he likes the area mm -hmm. um, and would like to stay, Ruffy, but that's the key element of it. I mean, I, I, one thing I would say about Motherwell, uh, I thought they sacked Mark McGee too early, mm -hmm. um, but they've been vindicated with the change that's just got them over the finish line. Yeah, uh, I'm sure the, the board members had to come to a decision. Uh, again, Mark had that heavy defeat up at Aberdeen, uh, which the team seemed to struggle to get back from. But, uh, but again, Mark would believe that he'd be doing everything right behind the scenes. A lot of young boys getting introduced. And he will tell you, like uh, Paul, Paul Haley, a lot of injuries, massive injuries. I think there was a couple of games where he had a back four that uh, had hardly played any games at all. So. Yeah. Things like that, you know, go against you. But you're right, you know, the, the, the manager that's in there deserves credit for, for getting them out. Yep, um, Lionel Ainsworth uh, hoping he can get a new deal. But he was also talking about the fact that Motherwell, with the players that they have available, shouldn't be scraping and scrapping to try and avoid relegation. We're all happy in there, and I think the fans are happy in that. But realistically, when you look at it, we shouldn't have been in the situation. Uh, when I was warming up against Hamilton, I was looking around, and I said to one of the boys, I said, we shouldn't be in this situation, not with our team. You know, we've got a good team. I'm not saying we should be up top three or whatnot, but we definitely are better than you know third bottom. So, and being in that situation, it's it's you know you you go through some mad mental stages. You know, even watching games and that. Sometimes you can see things happening, and and when it's not going your way, you need that little bit of luck. And I, you know, if it's it's fell down to the second last uh, second to last game of the season, that it's you know give, brought our look, uh, brought us luck. That's we'll take it. Yep, happy to take it. If they were looking to try and strengthen, I don't think there's a huge pot of money there for them to do that. But the one thing that I do think they have is a sellable asset in Chris Cadden. Yeah, they certainly have. Uh, he looks as if he's going to be a, a young boy with a big, big future in front of him, whether it's at Motherwell. We'll have to wait and see. I, I just think it's defensively since Stephen McManus, they lost that experience in there. You know, they struggled a wee bit. They had a, a really, really experienced uh, back four with Hamill and him. Uh, and they struggled when they picked up these injuries. So, again, it's another manager and a job, and the Motherwell supporters will be actively waiting to see what his idea of what kind of player comes in at Motherwell. Again, he'll have a budget as well, but uh, it'll be really interesting times. Uh. I'm glad that they got the win last night, um, Ruffy, because I think I associate Motherwell always as a premiership club. I think they've always got something to offer. 
Yeah, well, I think we just have to cast our mind back, uh, was it three years? They were sitting second and third for a, a long, long part of the season. Uh, they were up there fighting, battling, uh, very entertaining to watch. But again, like every every team, there's a cycle comes when it doesn't work for you and it just remains to be seen where they can get back up there. Yeah, uh, OK. Um, I'll tell you one thing, Ravi. I was looking at the Kamarnock goal last night and it was given away by a sloppy bit of defending from Keith Lasley, yeah. who's, our, who's <laughs> our guest tomorrow yeah. night. But I could, <laughs> I could see the guest slipping away. Yeah. And you should have seen his face. Uh, you know, his head went down and the manager was berating him from the sidelines. Yeah, I don't know what okay, Keith will have to explain that to us tomorrow. I don't know what he tried to do. I don't know whether he tried to just flick it out of the area and just mistimed it. But uh, one mistake a season isn't too bad for him. No, absolutely. Um, uh, the legs, I just wonder how long it's going to carry him through. Will he get another season at Motherwell? Um, we'll be talking to Keith Lansley. He's our put room guest tomorrow on the programme. Coming up, we're going to discuss that other playoff, Dundee United against Falkirk. And we will uh, also hear from Scott Brown and Alan Archibald, the head of Partick Thistle against Celtic. Will tomorrow night be 100 goals for Celtic? Um, we'll discuss that next. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. We've been discussing Premiership. Uh, now let's discuss Premiership playoff. Dundee United 2, Falkirk 2. Advantage the Bairns? Uh, only because it's obviously at home. Uh, I think this is going to be a nail-biter. I think this is going to be right to the end. Uh, I hope it's something special that uh, divides the two teams. I think it'll be a great... Uh, turnout, both sets of fans, uh, and it, I think it'll go right to the wire. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's stating <laughs> all the obvious bits. I can see right through you when you do this. It's called yeah. padding. Um, uh, I mean, four great goals, but I just, I just get the feeling that Falkirk. I don't know. I just get the feeling that they could be uh, the team to seal it. And, and get into yeah. yet another playoff. I think he deserves a bigger job, Peter Houston. I mean, uh, and it, uh, of course, we're going to we're going to hear from a, a Dundee United fan on mm -hmm. this second leg. But I think he's, he's he's a man who should be considered for a bigger job. I know that uh, Alex Smith has been mentioning the fact that uh, he thinks that the amount of chairmen and owners across the country maybe looking to younger managers mm -hmm. could be as a cheaper option rather than the experience of people who can who can get you to places and yeah. can make decisions in big games that you need. Yeah, I think he's got all the experience in the world. And I don't think it's just, it's not only what he does on the park, I think it's what he does away from the park as well. I think the structure that he puts into clubs is there for everybody to see. There's just a, a continuing conveyor belt of young players coming through uh, at Falkirk. And he does deserve something. I, I honestly Peter, can't call this one. I, yeah. I think Dundee United and, and Falkirk will know this. Or, that Dundee United are good enough to do and then get a win. Yeah, OK, so stick with Dundee United then. Are you going to go for Dundee United? Do you have to get a decision right now? Well, absolutely. It's 2-2. Two, two. It's nicely that's balanced. The Friday's the game. Just give us... That's what punditry's about. Who do you want to win? Who do I want to win? No, let me say that back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that'll get you in trouble. Yeah. Who's going to win? Yeah, I, I got a funny feeling Dundee United will sneak this. I do. Yeah? Yep. OK, I'll go Falkirk. Ruffy, because okay. that's the, the mechanics okay. of this programme now. Okay. You say one thing, you know, you and I go the other. other. Black and white. Okay. It gives us a little bit of an edge about it, okay? okay. Um, right, so uh, earlier on I caught up with the Dundee United uh, fan, uh, Mike Barilli, to get his thoughts, first of all, on the game. A bit disappointing, but at the moment it's only half time and there's still all to play for in the next game. Yeah, it was a howitzer of a game and some special goals. Yeah, it certainly was. I thought Murray took his goal really well. Uh, the two Falkirk goals, I thought, were errors from Dundee United that set them up. But the boy certainly stuck away the first one brilliantly. The second one, I was right in line behind the guy that took the kick. And I could see I could see the gap and I thought, he's going to stick it in there. <laughs> and it, of course, it just happened. But uh, annoying nevertheless. And I thought Spittle took his goal really well. He's both Spittle and Murray have been scoring a lot of goals recently, which is good. Yeah. That's that's what we want. If there is an advantage, do you think it's with Falkirk now? 
Not really. I, I think they might be just a wee bit extra confident and it could, could work against them, especially in two legs. The number of times I've seen teams come to Tannadice and think the job's done. You know, and I talk about teams like Borussia, etc., in that category. And, you know, there's, a, there's another leg to play in. That could be their downfall. Yeah. And the irony of all ironies, it's one of your old gaffers and Peter Houston that could come back to haunt you. I know, I saw him I saw him briefly a couple of weeks ago. He was at Sean Dillon's testimonial. And and him and Craig Levine were there and we were giving them the, the bit about, you know, see these bairns. We hate, I hate to see bairns crying, but see this Friday, I want thousands, thousands of them greeting. <laughs> As far as um, the, the the playoffs, I mean, everybody's talking about the uh, imbalance in the playoffs as far as the championship sides are concerned. I, I mean, is there a concern that both Dundee United and Falkirk might run out of legs by the time you face either Inverness or Hamilton? Yeah, there is a danger, but against that, you can't be building up a bit of momentum, to use a Labour quote there. <laughs> and... Uh, it's really good to go into these last few games, winning games, whereas the team we're going to play, because they're sick and bottoms, probably on a, a downward spiral, and they'll find it very difficult to raise their game. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Yeah, absolutely. I well, can't let you go without giving us your prediction for Friday night then. How's it going to finish? I think United will nick it. I think it will be 3-1 United. Yeah, nick it. 3-1 three one, <laughs> three is convincing, uh, Ruffy. But um, I'm not sure. See, did you see strategic placing of the tangerine yeah, ball was, on the uh, bed in the background? It's all yeah. staged there for me. Yeah. He's got an immaculate. And, of course, the bed's made as well. I mean, yeah. that can't be a real house. That must be a show house he's living in. Yeah, but I would have a wee bit worry about taking the ball to your bed with you every night. Yeah. You know. But that's a passionate supporter. You know, that's exactly that's it. it. And he, he shares your belief that they're going to win by three goals to one. No, as I well. never said 3 1. I think it will go all the way. Yeah. And Dundee United will win in your Yes, mind. extra time, penalties. A what? Lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay then. Uh, Patrick Thistle against Celtic. Um, Brendan Rogers wants 100 goals. Um, is he going to get it? Will it be as tight as the last time these two sides met? You would like to think that Partick this will take confidence uh, if we go to Parkhead and taking something out of that game. I believe they played particularly well in possession of the game, but yeah. they know it will have to be a hundred percent performance. No mistakes at the back. You know it have to be <laughs> Chris Doolan getting a goal uh, early on, uh, and uh, it'll be great for the fans. It'll be a really good. I th Celtic will get their hundredth goal. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and it'll be enough for them to get a draw. <laughs> Yeah, oh, 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 no, no, hold on. <laughs> is that, what, what do you mean, enough for Celtic to get a draw? A draw is a draw for both. Yes, um, I know, but, but I'm just uh, saying did that. Did you change your mind from last night? No, I said a draw. <clears throat> you said a draw. Of yeah. course, uh, um, you touched on something that Alan Archibald mentioned, which was, of course, that uh, eight or nine of his players have to play at the top of their game. His goalkeeper has to have a worldie um, to try and go one better than the last time they met. It was a 1 1 draw. Here's. Uh, Alan Archibald reflecting on that and looking ahead to the match. Yeah, we, we need to do a lot of similar things we've done at Parkhead. We, we probably need eight or nine players to play at the top of their game, their goalkeeper to turn up and, and make saves, which he has been doing in recent weeks. So we need to tick all the boxes and make sure that we have the belief and confidence to go and hurt them. We showed that in the second half, but we were lucky to be in the game at half-time. Celtic were very good in the first half and we got to half-time at 0-0, which was great from our point of view, and we went and built on that. But we'll not get away with that, and we've said that to the lads, we'll not get away with that on Thursday night. We know that, especially away from home, they can be very cutthroat. We've seen that first-hand against Aberdeen on Friday night, so we need to make sure we're ready for a, a rampant Celtic. Obviously, we got a good point at Parkhead the last time, and, and hopefully we can go one better and get the three. We know how difficult it will be. Um, they're fine for them, obviously. They have been all season, and we need to be at the top of our game to try and get the three points. I hope he stays. I mean, there's all sorts of clubs sniffing around, but uh, he's been excellent this season as a manager, and I think he conducts himself impeccably. And he's got an able assist, and I like mm -hmm. Scott Patterson. I thought he was a, a player, had it not been for injury, could have mm -hmm. gone on to greater things. Yeah, I think the two of them have been fantastic together. The two of them bounce <coughs> off each other. Uh, they work well together. Uh, they're singing for the same hymn sheet, and uh, it'll be a test. It'll be a massive test if a club come in. And he'll be the one that'll have to uh, weigh up what he has at Partick Thistle and what the way ahead is at Partick Thistle. 
to where he would be uh, trying to get tempted to go. So it's a, it's a massive decision. I'm not saying there is anything there just now. I'm only saying if there was something. But I think everything's going well at Partick Thistle just now. So I, I would think he might be swayed to stay. Yeah, but I just cannot see anything other than a Celtic win uh, tomorrow night, Ruffy, because now suddenly they've been talking. Scott Brown was talking about going undefeated right throughout the entire season. Three games to go. Yeah, I mean, we all know that Celtic are going to have most of the possession. And as Alan said there, if there's any chances come Partick this way, they have to take them. They have to take them early if they get them because you know that Celtic will throw everything at them. The players want the invincible tag and it's going to be a, a tough night. But he's right, the players have showed that they can get something out of the game. Yep, uh, Celtic captain Scott Brown, of course, missed a couple of games. He's just determined to get back out there playing. We had a good bit of training this week and uh, building up to the game now, so uh, I'll be looking forward to hopefully getting a, a wee game again. Uh, Partick's a huge game coming up here and then we've got Hearts and you, you never know what Hearts team could come up on the day. Uh, but you know, they're two good teams in top, two top six, and, but yeah, again for the lads, they've had two great results there uh, against two, a top six team, so it's been great. OK, I'm going to go Celtic to win that one, Ruffy, since it's just the two of us in the studio and you're going for... I'm going for one each. You're going for the Jags to get a point in that? Yes. Yeah, OK. Um, Chris Davis was talking yesterday as well, the assistant. It's just been a season that they'll never forget. I mean, the first season has been incredible for Chris Davis and the manager, Brendan Rodgers. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, to, when you sit back and look at it, you know, that uh, there hasn't been many games that uh, they've looked as if they're going to get beaten. That shows you how how well they've done and, and no matter what players come off the bench, they've been as good as what's been on the park and that's been the positive side for them. Yep, absolutely. It could be history in the making for Celtic. They've already got to 100 points. They're looking for 100 goals. Uh, they're looking to earn that Invincibles tag. Will they do it? At Peter and Ruffy on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. You can give us your thoughts on that or indeed your favourite team. Uh, we've been posing you an Eric Cantona question. We'll give you the answer after this quick break. going to say what a waste but it wasn't really because what he actually delivered in his time in English football was absolutely mesmerising I mean it's sad that he decided mm -hmm. at 30 um, you know I've had enough yeah and he was a special player uh, on the park and he was a special person off the park as well yeah. uh, but he had the arrogance and he had the ability to go with it and I just loved when he scored a goal yeah. And he just gave it. It was it was always a special goal. They give you that arrogant sort of a. Yeah. Uh, I think the game stars. you're talking about was the game against was it Sunderland where he actually just chips the goalkeeper and because the fans have been giving him pelters, he just looked about mm -hmm. as if to say, "This yeah. is the norm. This yeah. is what I do." Mm -hmm. It was, but most of the goals he scored were absolutely spectacular, and that just shows you when you've got a team like that, you can afford a player like that in your side, yeah. somebody a little bit special. Do you know what I like about him, uh, Ruffy, when you read various books on you know, a lot of the players from the class of 92, and this is a lesson for footballers today, sometimes when you get a special player uh, like Canton, I joined Manchester United, stayed behind after training, practised, you know, and you hear the likes of Gary Neville and David Beckham and countless others saying, well, you know, we're young guys, we're watching this guy at the top of his game and he's staying behind, mm -hmm. so we'll stay behind yeah. and we'll practice and we'll get better. And that, I think, is a lesson, you know, when you look at guys like that, it, you know, there's talent and then there's hard mm -hmm. graft as well. Yeah, I think when you, you identify somebody at the club who's got that ability, you want to be equal to him. You want to be as good as So you practice and you see what he does and you just sponge off everything he does. I think the only thing that I wouldn't sponge off him would be his press conferences, yeah. which could be a wee bit... Well, we off, are, I don't off, know why you're saying... The trolley. I, I, don't, I don't know why you're saying <laughs> they could be a wee bit off the trolley. We're in the midst of that at the <clears> moment. <throat> Some of the manager's press conferences at the moment are just ridiculous. <clears> I mean, they're painting pictures and telling you stories that are just... It's a nonsense. You have yeah. to actually sift through it and say, yeah. you know, what you're saying is not exactly true. Yeah, but I haven't heard any of them mentioning seagulls. No, no, that's true, Rocky. But nevertheless, <laughs> I, I thought he was an absolute joy. But again, 
so many players, you know, that you think about that, you know, could have gone on for another five, six, seven years, just giving you even more memories. The best goal that he ever scored for me, well, the one that I enjoyed the most, I think, um, because of the technique, was the, the FA Cup final goal against Liverpool. Not that I enjoyed them scoring against mm -hmm. Liverpool because I'm a... I'm a huge mm -hmm. uh, Liverpool fan, but it, it, the way he actually managed to arc his body to get mm -hmm. the, the shot in. Yeah, and it came through a lot of players as well, you know, and at a crucial time. And uh, it was just, just a strike that only good players can time, you know, to get their, their foot round about it. And to do it in such a high profile game just said everything about them. Yeah, maybe not a lesson to jump into the crowd. That's the only probably nitpicking, you know, if you get people giving you pelters uh, on the park. It's not a good idea to kung fu kick them because uh, it can lead to a long uh, sideline, a long penalty. Um, but other than that, it was a joy to watch. A um, couple of things that I want to get your thoughts on, Ruffy. Uh, still some uh, great stories. Uh, incidentally, one guy who actually played until he was 36 and he announced his retirement was Dirk Kout. Um, he scored a hat-trick in his final game for Feyenoord. They win the title and then he announces his retirement. I think it was... That's the perfect way mm -hmm. <laughs> to say goodbye. Yeah, well, when you played at the top, and even at Liverpool, I thought he was a great player. But when you're at the top and you're winning things, uh, when you've been at the top for a long time, you don't want to go down the way. So he's right uh, to, to leave now with the memories that he has, and I'm sure he's got tons of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I thought he was a great player at Liverpool as well, but he... He scored good goals uh, at the weekend to make sure that uh, Feyenoord were the champions of the uh, Eredivisie. Uh, Dirk Kout announced his retirement. OK, Scott Gemmell's announced his under-20 squad uh, for the Toulon tournament, uh, <coughs> Ruffy. Uh, so let's have a look at it. Some of the players that we hope we'll be talking about over the next four or five years um, that uh, become stars of the future. That's the big. Pr that's the big problem. This is where we're looking at these guys, and you think, who's going to emerge? Well, this is a leap, you know, that uh, unfortunately we haven't been able to do for a long, long time. But I think the the advantage of going to a big tournament and playing against the likes of Brazil uh, and the quality that come there, just as you were talking about there, raising your standards, seeing what where you've got to be and what you've got to achieve, and, and you come back for these tournaments a better player, and you go back to your club and, and, and be a better player there as well. So as long as we can take something out of the game, uh, the tournament, you know, that's the main thing for me. Yeah, we've got Czech Republic, Brazil and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, let's hope we've done a bit of research on Indonesia. We don't want any Iran-Peru situations no. again, Ruffy. No, I'm sure there'll be some they'll have went to watch them and found out their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, Something that we should have maybe have done. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know who the current holders are of the Toulon tournament? Hmm. Take a guess. France. England. Wow. There you have it in a nutshell. Um, OK, uh, so from the Toulon tournament, a couple of things uh, that we want to talk about before we finish. Um, managers coming and going. OK, Maurizio Pochettino. Uh, he's been linked with countless jobs, people looking at him. I've even heard Real Madrid at one point, uh, Inter Milan. Uh, he says he's staying at Tottenham. I think that's great news for uh, for Tottenham. Uh, do, can they make that next step, Ruffy? Can they finally just put to bed the, the 1961 double winning side and, and create their own little bit of history by winning the Premier League? Yeah, I think they've got wonderful players there. Eriksson, obviously, uh, is a big player. Kane... Uh, I think they need a big player. I think they need a Ibrahimovic or somebody like that. I think they need a massive. I think they need to go out and spend big for a striker or a couple, you know, to make that jump. I think when you start talking about trying to win leagues and everything, I think you need big, big players. And until they actually sign a couple, I think they'll still be round about the top four. Well, I'm going to suggest to you that uh, obviously I think Wembley could be. You know, difficult for them next season. Let's put it that way. Uh, whether they can overcome that or not, I don't know. But I think by the time they move to the the, the new stadium, uh, and the way the structure of that club looks at the moment, I think I think they could be one of the you know the big mm -hmm. clubs th in the next couple of years. I think they will win the mm -hmm. Premier League. I, I've got a feeling about them, mm -hmm. especially if they hold on to this manager. No, I just I just think they're two or three players away uh, from doing that uh, again be interesting to see who they'll lose. They might lose a couple of players and, and, and who he might bring in. But I, I still think when you look at the likes of, uh, you know, Arsenal, when Arsenal were up there, the players that they brought in, you know I mean? Big players, you know, the, the Dutch players. 
And I think they need to do that. I think the state start need to identify big, big players for other countries. OK. Um, one man who won't be uh, staying in English football over the course of next season is Walter Matsari. He becomes the ninth manager in five years at Watford. He'll be saying goodbye. His last game against Manchester City. I don't know what Watford are doing. I'm Again, it's all, about, it's all about ownership. Yeah. You know, it's all about owners who have their own ideas, uh, wanting to run a club instead of leaving it to somebody else, you know, a football person. They want to make the decisions and uh, it looks as if it's not the right uh, way to go down uh, because, of, obviously, as you said, the amount of managers they're going through. Yeah. Um, Gareth Bale is back in training, Rafi, for Real Madrid. Um, this is good news. We've been trying to get him fit. Uh, and ready for the final for forever and a day. There's still speculation that he could be going to Manchester United, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think he's, I think he's one of those players. There is a suggestion that Zidane is not quite uh, the manager that wants mm -hmm. to go down the Galacticos route. He was a Galactico himself, mm -hmm. but. I think Bale's one of those guys who's still got a lot to offer at Real Madrid. Yeah, I think so as well. And uh, you're right, you're looking at Barcelona, you're looking at the three that they've got, you know, and uh, if they three can, can work together, <coughs> I, I'm sure the Real Madrid three up front can work together as well. I mean, you've got big-time players like that. As he's proved before, he scores big-time goals and it's not any bigger than the Champions League final. Yeah, as you're aware, I'm picking Juventus to win mm -hmm. the Champions League final. They're chasing a treble. Uh, Ruffy, much like Celtic here, they're uh, against Lazio in the cup. Uh, then they've got uh, you know the sixth Serie A title on the horizon, and of course the Champions League final in Cardiff as well. I think I think they're going to do it. I think of, of all of them, you know, the Champions League is the big one. That's the one they want. Yeah, the only way I would sway to UV is because of the goalkeeper. Uh, I think he's yeah. had an incredible career and 48. Uh, just following, obviously, in the footsteps of Dina's off. Yeah. Uh, for him, I would like to win the Champions League. Okay. But he's not going to. Okay, you're going for Real Madrid. Yes. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Punditry at its best, right to the end. Uh, last point here. I should have mentioned this last night, but one of my, you know, you know how we get people to come up to his friends and mm -hmm. and people who like watching the show. Um, I'm going to give a mention to Richie Salveta. He's part of the coaching team at the BSC. Um, uh, they're taking on Spartans in the Lowland League Cup final on Sunday in Edinburgh, the first leg of it. So good luck to good luck to both teams, but obviously good luck to Richie and the boys. So you're uh, falling well. into my trap. What? Just because you like them. No, no, I mean, I just thought, <laughs> well, he asked me, can you give the boys a mention? And I thought it's well worth it. I mean, people who follow the show, I mean, people who follow the show sometimes take photographs of us, Ruffy. Yes, you know? they certainly do. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's find out where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And on that note, uh, thanks very much to uh, Ruffy. Join us tomorrow. Mm. Keith Lasley will be on the programme. We'll be talking about uh, that little mistake of his and, of course, the win at the end of it. <laughs> thanks for watching the show tonight. Good night. <laughs>